Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, Manvi, and HDFC Bank, both the numbers were in line. There was clearly no major surprise. Let's start with HDFC Bank. PAT came in at about 3,460 crore. Estimates were 3,470. Now, it could not be uh, closer than that. Provision 749 crores. However, loan growth came in at 19%. Now, Street was expecting 20%. Actually, to be precise, it was about 18.1. So, I think that's the only one clarification that, you know, probably with the management has to give. Gross NPA came in at about 1.02. Uh, the PAT number was in line with estimates. The provisioning number was in line. Uh, advances also. Uh, okay, I think, uh, okay, I think the management is talking. Break to start or when I'll just quickly walk you through a few key numbers and I'll be happy to take your questions thereafter. So for the quarter ended September 30th, our net revenues were at 10,894.5 crores, which was a growth of 18%. Net interest income at 7,993 crores registered a growth of 19.6%. The NIM was at 4.2% and average asset growth was about 19.7%. Um, other income, which constitutes about 27% of net revenues, grew by 13.7%. Uh, that was from 2,550 crores to 2,901 crores. Operating expenses, which were at 4,870 crores, increased by 16.2%, that meant that the cost to income ratio uh, did improve from 45.4% to 44.7%. Uh, total provisions were at 749 crores uh, as against 681 crores for the corresponding quarter of last year. Profit before tax was up 21% to 5,275.6 crores and after tax the net profit grew by 20.4% and was at 3,455 crores. Um, moving on to just a few of the balance sheet items, the overall balance sheet growth was at 19.5%. Uh, so the balance sheet touched 7,88,000 odd crores. The advances growth was at 18.1% which is, uh, as against, I think, the system growth, which was at 10.1%. Uh, deposit growth was at 16.7%. Again, uh, that compares with about... Obviously, on a, on a sequential basis, uh, you've had different elements of about 5 to 6% growth across different segments within uh, the advances book, because last year in September, there was a bit of a spike. That, uh, you know, the base was a little higher. On the deposit side, uh, CASA growth, in particular, savings account growth was particularly robust. In fact, uh, savings accounts grew by 21.6% and touched 1,059,950 crores. And uh, current account growth at 13.4% meant that overall CASA growth was fairly healthy and the CASA ratio uh, remained at uh, around 40%. The bank's distribution network uh, is at 4,548 branches. ATMs are just over 12,000. 54% uh, of the branches are in semi-urban and rural areas. Many of these parameters, therefore, have been fairly stable in terms of proportion. On the asset quality front, again, a marginal improvement. Uh, the asset quality uh, as against the NPAs as of as against 1.04% in June were at 1.02%. Uh, net NPAs were at 0.3%. The total CAR for the bank, the capital adequacy ratio, stood at 15.4%, and the Tier 1 CAR was at 13.3%. Um, I think that probably covers most of the parameters. Um, while it's higher than the 
So uh, within the overall growth of uh, the uh, growth was about 19.3 percent because clearly there's an element of overseas advances which as you know will gradually come off this quarter because some of it was linked to the, uh, but it started off marginally in the last quarter, much of it will come off in this quarter. But if you look at the 19.3 percent of overall domestic advances growth, the uh, retail portion did grow at uh, a little under 22 percent, 21 and a half percent. And within that, we had multiple products growing at fairly healthy rates, roughly 20 percent growth uh, in, in auto. Uh, you had uh, most of the other products growing anywhere between the mid to high teens. So it, it's really been across almost all the retail products a fairly healthy growth. On the wholesale side, uh, although you know we continue to have uh, some disbursements which were fairly healthy, the uh, we had done some we had some uh, short term loans which had been done in the March quarter which ran off uh, in this quarter. So the overall year on year growth in wholesale lagged retail loan growth for uh, on a year on year basis, uh, but. You know, it's really been otherwise fairly widespread across. It's not been one or two, one or two products or segments which were driving growth. Uh, within retail, again, you know, the apart from auto, which I mentioned, we've seen fairly uh, healthy, continued healthy growth in personal loans. Uh, a bit of a pickup in uh, even loans against shares, which is a small portion, but that again we saw some growth. Uh, Artisan Gold Card, which is an agri loan piece, has also grown. Well, liquidity is comfortable. Uh, of course, in, in our case, we have in particular built uh, additional liquidity uh, in the last few months in anticipation of the uh, runoffs that we will see in the FCNR piece. So, in fact, even when you look at the uh, net interest margin, which has come off by a few basis points, Part of that is because we had maintained additional liquidity, which you know, money which we have raised and which we are holding in uh, monthly computation uh, in the last two, three, you know, months that we have had this computation. There have been different tenors where the lending rates have been coming off by five or ten basis points uh, in in every month. Uh, at the same time, there are, you know, there will be always some banks who will uh, compete on the fixed deposit rate. So I guess there is a there's a range within which rates can be uh, brought down on the deposit side. Um, any